I didn't know anything about sledding. And that's why learning how to sled has been so comical. We didn't have anybody to help us or teach us. Having to figure it out by yourself, it's really challenging. I'm Tracy, I live in North Vancouver and I work in the film industry. Renee and I both relocated to the coast around the same time. What I love about snowboarding is just being in the mountains. There's this sense of relief that comes with seeing how small you are when you're in these grand, overwhelming landscapes. It's become really important for me to be able to get out to the mountains really, really frequently and kind of ground myself. My name's Renee, I live in North Vancouver, and I work as an emergency nurse. When I was a kid, I started competing in big mountain comps, and I just got so much internal validation from my own progression, and that was my life. I always felt better about myself when I was skiing well. I have really bad ADHD, and I've also dealt with pretty severe depression. Those two things, hand in hand, create this awesome storm of a complete lack of motivation. It's so hard to get myself out the door some days. In the last couple years, I started my career as an emergency nurse, went back to school for that. I lost my grandma, and I was a part of a backcountry fatality, all with a pandemic going on. I felt bogged down. I felt like it didn't matter if I gave in to the anxiety or if I put up a fight against it, because either way, I was gonna be exhausted at the end. And every time I pushed myself, I was just getting more miserable and more anxious. I think skiing is a coping mechanism for a lot of people, and it works well as a coping mechanism until it doesn't. It's the adrenaline. You get dopamine from adrenaline, and dopamine makes you feel good. And I think in a lot of ways, yes, that's a coping me mechanism, but it's also a cover-up. I was having these invisible crashes with my mental health. There's not really a dedicated way to heal your mental health in the ski industry. You're just expected to push through to get that adrenaline dopamine hit and then wake up the next day and do it again. There's, yeah, there's no end goal for your mental health. The scar tissue builds up and it's still there no matter what. When you buy a sled, you assume you're gonna buy the sled, throw your skis on the back and just like go ride backcountry. And nobody tells you that you're gonna be rolling around on flat ground for the next like two seasons getting stuck. It's been really, really challenging, but with that has definitely come a sense of accomplishment. I took time away from skiing in the end, but I had just bought a sled and trying something new ultimately brought me back to skiing in the most roundabout way. I feel like I've come so far with ultimately like a very challenging sport and have just gotten to the point where I'm opening new doors for myself in terms of getting into the backcountry and getting back to a place that I used to be on a snowboard. The confidence that sledding has brought that seeps over a little bit more into the rest of my life. I'm someone that still struggles a lot, but I'm someone that is a little bit more gentle on myself. The biggest thing with sledding, there's no previous you to compare yourself to. I've come back into loving skiing again. Full faces hide tears. It's very hard. It is the most humbling thing that I think I've ever done. 
I have brought back the feeling of being capable. Being able to go after something that I really want to do and ultimately achieve that by myself. And finally, we're starting to get somewhere. But it's been me and Tracy leaning on each other and learning how to do this crazy thing. Yeah, slaying turns in the pow is fun. <laughs> Do I feel cool on my sled? Yes, yes I do, very cool. <laughs>